everybody, Joe coming to you for Monday morning coffee from String Lake in Grand Teton. It's absolutely gorgeous today, and we're going to go out and take some great pictures. But let's get into our subject of the day for Monday morning coffee. Hey everybody, today's topic is what do you do when you're out in the field and your camera won't take pictures? During one of our recent workshops, we had a photographer with a camera that wouldn't take pictures when the shutter was released. Now, I've seen this a lot over the years, and although cameras have changed a lot, the causes of it really haven't. So I'm making the assumption that you have some kind of indication that the camera has power, there's not a dead battery in it, and that you put a memory card into the camera. Otherwise, this morning's talk is about how to find the problem so that you can get back to shooting right away. So let's get started. Number one, check the memory card. Now, when I say this, I don't mean if there's a memory card in the camera, hopefully you've done that, but that the card is either full or locked. Most cameras will show you in the viewfinder how many pictures you have remaining. If it says zero, obviously you need to change cards. Less obvious, however, is if your card has accidentally been locked. On SD cards, there's a little slider on the side of the card that keeps it from being written to. Notice that on an SD card, there's this little slider. If you have it pushed down when the title is up, that means the card is locked. There's also a very little tiny lock symbol on there. Make sure the card is unlocked so that it can be written to. Again, most mirrorless cameras will tell you if the card is locked, but it may not be as obvious on a DSLR. The test is to slide the lock so that the card is ready for images. If this doesn't work, time for test number two. Simply turn the camera from on to off, let it sit there for a couple of seconds, and then turn it back on again. Think of this as a camera reboot. When you turn the camera on and then off, leave it that way for a couple of seconds before turning it back on. Now, another thing that can happen is your camera is in recording mode for video, and this changes depending on the camera. For example, on my camera, I can either push the little dot, red dot button to record video, or right on the side here, and I'll show you up close, there's an option for shooting video. Now, when this button is set for recording video, when you press the shutter, all it does is start and stop recording video. It won't take pictures. Make sure your camera is not in video mode. With this little video camera on the dial, when I press the shutter, it will just shoot video. It will not release the shutter. Now, this camera also has the red dot for video recording regardless of what setting is on your dial. But if you put it on the video re recording dial, that's all it will do. So make sure you're in one of your normal modes, manual aperture shutter program so that your shutter will work and not start shooting video. So be careful that you're not in video mode. If you are, make sure you change your dial so that you're shooting in photo mode. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is to actually remove the battery. Sometimes just powering on and off isn't enough. You gotta take the battery out again, let it sit for a couple of seconds, and then put it back in. If this doesn't clear it out, also have another battery with you. You should never be traveling with one battery. Get another one and swap it out and see if that corrects the problem. When you remove the battery, if by chance the camera got hung up a little bit, taking the battery out and waiting a couple of seconds will clear up a lot of problems. But there's still other things that can go wrong. So what's next? The next thing to do would be to remount the lens. All autofocus lenses have connections that talk to the camera. You can see them here. Again, I'll show you closer. All those little gold contacts on the edge of the lens, they connect to the little gold contacts on the bottom of the lens mount. Occasionally, you'll find a lens isn't mounting correctly. Maybe it got cold or hot or something like that. Make sure it is put on all the way and that the connection is made. Taking the lens off and remounting it may fix the problem. If that doesn't fix the problem, consider trying another lens. Let's make sure the problem is in the connection with that particular lens rather than something in the camera body. If you put another lens on and it works, then you know there's a connection problem with your camera's lens. If that's the case, you might want to take a look at those connections and make sure they're not dirty or covered in something. Get some kind of cleaner to clean off those contacts and that will often fix the problem. 
So if changing the lens doesn't work, there's one more step to try to try to nail down where the problem is. Now, if you had a manual lens, when you put that on the camera, one of the things you have to tell the camera is to be able to shoot without a lens because manual, cam manual lenses rather don't have any contacts that talk to the camera. So the camera doesn't actually see that there's a lens there. But what this allows it to do is to still fire the shutter with that manual lens on it. So what you can do even with your regular lens is go into your menu system and it's going to be different on every camera system. You're going to have to look that one up in the book. But turn the camera on to shoot without lens. If you allow it to do that and your shutter works, then you know it's something between the camera and the lens connection. Now, if you've tried two different lenses and it's not working, you may have a bad contact or a dirty contact in your camera itself. If that's the case, you probably really want to send it out or bring it to a camera store and see if they can repair that for you. Next step, what else can happen? Well, maybe because your camera can't focus. If you're too close to the subject and the camera can't use its autofocus, it's not going to allow the shutter to work. So take a look inside and when your camera is in focus, when you push down the shutter halfway, you'll see a little green dot in the bottom of the screen. If you're not getting that green dot, what you need to do is back up a little bit until your camera is able to autofocus and you see that green dot on the bottom of the screen. The last step, well, the next to last step. The last step you can do is do a camera reset. This will be a full software reset of your camera, all considered reset to factory settings. Now, this is also a setting in your camera's menu. Again, it's in a different place on every camera. And you'll get a warning that it's going to reset the camera to factory defaults. Now, on most cameras, this isn't a big deal. But on certain cameras where you spend a lot of time setting all of the custom buttons to something, you're going to lose that. It's annoying, but at least you know you're going to have your camera back to the way it was when it came out of the box. Most of us have experienced some sort of camera freeze, so don't panic. Go through these steps and relax. This also, by the way, points out why pros always have two camera bodies with them. Something to consider if you're going on a once in a lifetime trip. So those are some tips to consider. If your camera is not shooting in the field, if your shutter release is not working, go through these steps and there's a good chance that one of these things will fix your camera. I hope that's the case if it ever happens to you. So thanks for joining me for Monday Morning Coffee. I'm gonna leave you today with a little bit of the scene behind me and the lake around me. It's just a stunning place. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great week. See you next time, bye-bye.